Okie dokie, let's see if, if I'm live or if everything is working. So, hi there everybody. It's Riika Kovasin here with uh, my first live in this group. And I'm going to recreate a box like this with several different mediums. So, I'm just seeing if if there's anybody online if you can see and hear me okay then just give me thumbs up or comment or something that i know that everything is working so hi everybody i'm reiko kovasen from finland so english is not my native tongue so i hope you can understand what i'm saying also but there's a couple of more minutes and then i start remaking this one hi holly hi Dia diane sorry i'm hoping everything is okay let's see i'm still <laughs> Still eagerly waiting for a comment or, or a reaction that everything is working. I guess. Hi, Charlene. I know there's a lot of people online at the moment. Steph is doing a live. And if I saw correctly, Tim Holtz was live or is live. So... Probably this is going to be a recorded session for many, but no matter. I can't see any comments, so maybe I should start my Facebook to see if, if everything is okay. Because it might be just that I'm not seeing the comments. Let me try push that one. Nope. Nope. That didn't help at all. So let me just open my computer and check everything is co cool and then I'll actually start. I'm just going back and forth seeing because I know that people are watching so probably Everything is okay, but I just want to make sure. Going back and forth. So if if you're just tuning in, just stay stay tuned for a little bit. Hi Laura. And I'll check from my computer because I can't see comments. I can see who's on live, but I unfortunately can't see the comments. So let's see. In the meanwhile, this is the project I'm going to recreate. A lot of different mediums and the kind of main point is these embellishments that are really easy to do. They are done using hot glue. Heavy. Yeah, snowy, everything. Yeah, so I guess you we are okay. Sorry about that. I see the comments from my computer, but I can't see them here. I don't know why. So unfortunately, <laughs> if you have any questions, I need to go through them afterwards. I try to keep my eye on the computer there, but probably when I start creating I actually forget about it totally so let's move that but I will try try to catch everything so well let's start over hi there it's Rika Kovasin I'm a Finnish crafter and I'm 
remaking a box like this. So let's get started. I already painted this just a wooden box from a local craft store and I started by painting it with metallic acrylic paint but naturally you can use any paint. This just has, because the box looks like an old book, so the paint to me echoed that kind of vintage old lettery look. So I used that one. The first thing I'm going to do is add some paper collage on top. So then I'm going to show you how to make these embellishments while this dries. So for that I use a soft body gel medium. I'm a Finnabar brand ambassador, so that's one of the reasons I use Prima Marketing supplies, but also I actually like them really much. So it's not just that, because even before I was the brand ambassador, I used these. So as you probably know, gel medium is a quite, um, let's say, broad um, selection of mediums. There's different ones. For example, there's thicker and thinner ones. This one is thin, like a liquid version. So it's perfect for collaging papers, for example. So add a layer of the gel underneath and then put a layer of the gel above as well. So the paper is kind of sandwiched between the layers. Originally gel mediums were invented for acrylic paints to make them look different. So for example these soft body more liquidy versions were made to make acrylic paints resemble watercolors because if you dilute acrylic paint just with plain water, it also dilutes the binder in the paint. But if you use something like this, then you dilute just the pigment without the binder. So you can even go with glass or some kind of non-absorbing hard surfaces with the medium, but having that kind of glaze effect. I'm using the same stuff to collage a couple of oopsie daisy, pieces of old book paper on top. So like I said, this is perfect for collage work where you adhere paper, but you can also use this to make your own paints, for example, or your own glitter paste. It's white in the jar and dries clear. Probably you know that, but in case there's someone who doesn't know. And now I'll let it air dry while I use the molds to make the embellishments. I'm sorry about I can't answer any comments. I'll try to see like, hello everybody, thank you for joining. So. This is just a hot glue gun and a silicone mold. So all of these embellishments first look like this. But then you can use a different mediums to turn them into metallic looking or rusty looking or vintage looking. And it's really easy way. I've been using these for quite, quite a while. I think it was Linda Kane who, f who I first saw using this, but since it's been many crafters. But what you require is a mold that stands the heat, because when you use a glue gun, it's over 100 degrees, the glue when it comes out. One trick, if you start just pressing it to the mold, probably as the mold is cool and this is hot, it may have some kind of defects, let's say. So the trick is to use a heat tool. 
So you first heat whatever shape. Let's take that one, for example. Heat the mold a little. So now this is hot and this is hot. So then it's more likely to have a clean shape. Naturally, you can use these silicone molds with resin or paper clay, but I'm usually a bit like a speedy crafter, so I want things done. So it doesn't take that long for hot glue to actually cool down. So while it's, you probably all know that while it's still transparent, it's hot, don't put your finger in it. Well, we all do that. Seth says hi. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's on at the very moment. So I totally realize or understand that he can't be here as well. Let's do another one. Maybe I'll leave. Please say hi from me to Seth as well. I will watch the recording of his live later. And here we have the leaf. Then let's put those aside. Let's do a couple of gears still. There's no kind of limitations on what you can do, only what kind of mold you have. And the great part with hot glue is also that if there is some like over how do you spell it? Oh, spillage is that a word so it comes over you can cut it with craft scissors no need to use anything sturdier because it's so moldable blend and bendable and also if you would like to adhere these to a glass jar or something because you can mold them they're bendable so if you have a curved surface you can actually curve these embellishments along the surface whether if you use resin for example that's a really sturdy piece the only thing you need to remember is that it's hot glue so if you use heat gun while you're crafting remember that they are hot glue because they start melting the first thing i usually do is add a layer of gesso on top okay that looks like a just black blob but anyway there's a layer of black gesso on top because that usually helps a little they don't start uh, melting right away but still be careful Oh, and also, I highly recommend if you want to do molding with hot glue to buy a bigger gun. I do also have the craft size, like the little teeny tiny one. But, well, I'm not patient enough to use it for molding because it takes ages to fill. And also, as it comes up with less of the glue at one go, so it's easier to get kind of defects. You can see the lines where the already a little bit cooled glue attaches to the warm one. So if you want a smooth kind of shape, then the bigger gun is better. Otherwise it can be craft or hardware or whatever because the silicone mold will anyway let it loose now let me take that just off hopefully it's this one oh when i start using my heat tool i'll see if i 
pull the right plug. But there's all sorts of these all molds are from free marketing but there's a lot of molds available just make sure that they are silicone so they handle the heat as they are still warm I'll set them aside let's see if this one is well it's dried enough my second little whoops okay now we are focused again second little trick Whenever I start making a project, I usually don't have a big plan in my head when, when I craft. I'm more like go with the flow style of crafter. I like to play with different mediums and textures. But there's always, or at least I hope there's always, a focal point that kind of gathers the gaze and it's the center of attention so from the bottom up I start building layers that way that they lead the eye to the center of the attention and one easy way to do that is kind of intersecting lines and an easy way to do that is to use washi tape I bet we all have rolls and rolls of washi tape so even though they are pretty on their own part, it's handy because, well, as you can see from the finished version, you can't really actually see them anymore. They are underneath all of the layers. But to me, that's kind of setting my mind that, for example, now I have the cross over here. So the focal point is going to be in this area, even though probably... I end up losing all of these underneath the layers, but they're still kind of a sketch getting me focused on the subject. Let's see, I need to dry this a little bit. Okay, it was the wrong one. before this live my husband asked if I need more plugins and I was like okay I'm, I'm doing fine but it would have been actually it seems nice to have more I don't have a craft room so I craft in our living room so I'm kind of in the center of it all. The first textured layer, let's say, or the first layer, and this is the textured one, I'm going to use Seth's embossing powders to the background. Nothing too fancy, just a stencil, embossing ink and embossing powders. I actually have two embossing ink pads and you probably can see the reason why because this is my mixed media pad so it's like it has paint and it has inks on it and it's okay because that's the messy version and then I have a clean version which I use normally for stamping so I don't get any residue from the other projects to to the other pad because well, hmm. let's say I'm not a neat crafter in that way because I think stencils, ink pads, everything is a tool, so I don't want to be too precise in, in that way that I want just get things going, do stuff rather than clean stuff. So it's handier for me to have actually two pads. The other one I can use the what, whatever way and the other one is the nice one. <laughs> so just embossing ink through the stencil and then I'm guessing I'm taking my 
favorite, which is Crusty Copper. These are Seth's powders from WOW, like I said, and they are blends. Probably, I'm not sure if he has shown you these already. So there's granules of different embossing powders mixed in together. So it's not, even though it's copper, it's crusty copper, so it's not just one metallic, but it's has these little flakes of black and more golden color, so it's more vintage, crusty, worn kind of effect than just a one copper tone. Let's put it all back and see if there's a little bit in there. Let me see. Like so. Step it back to the jar, and when I haven't heated it yet, I can actually take my finger or take a brush if it seems that some areas are too too dense. So I can kind of fray the edge, let's say, so it's more like uneven edge and not solid pattern all the way. More worn, more vintagey, let's say. And I actually just blew the rest of off. And let's heat it. see if I can show you the there we go so it's not just one metal tone it's kind of a mix of different powders naturally if you have a copper tone powder and a black one and an empty jar just put them to one like in sibinsi amounts of each put them then then to the jar mix it up and you end up with something crusty like like this but if you don't want to mix your own powders then these are handy then another kind of easy peasy lemon squeezy because the molds well they cost something and actually well hot glue it costs something but if you buy one mold and then you have kind of unlimited supply of let's say gears because you can just mold, mold, mold more and then use mediums on top. And if you want silver one or if you want golden one, you always have the one you need because you can then just paint it with the color you are needing. So the other one I use a lot is die cuts, especially the thick Bix dies. This is really old. Uh, but it's one of my favorite picture wheel and it's actually a coaster. So again, me and my husband have a deal. Whenever he went, uh, goes to a bar, I get coasters. <laughs> so they're sturdy. Naturally you can buy chipboard or use packaging like materials, but coasters are handy as well. They are sturdy enough to be altered with different mediums. So I'm using the same powders to turn this into more metal looking. Just embossing uh, ink on top and then I'm adding the powder. If you want to see something more of this, I'll add a link later because there's a free embossing 
powder class from um, Artful Academy where I created a project using these Seth's powders turning for example paper straws into metal tubes so I can add the link later as it's, it's a free class then let's heat this one So already one layer and it's already looking more like metallic aged even though there's the text still peeking through a little so let's add another layer this color I used was called etched platinum so there's three different powders in the set my favorite is the crusty copper but they are all all good but if you don't have these then if, if you have any metallic powders and black for example try mixing let's focus there we go try mixing them a little bit because then you get more varied effect there's also a way to mix the powders on top of whatever you're embossing naturally you can just take another powder and mix those for example that was crusty copper and now I'm adding a little bit of the platinum here and there so when they melt there's different kind of metals going on in in the shape I kept a Facebook live at 12's own page about mixing powder so if you want I can add that link as well <laughs> and then adding gold at the last if I missed anything with the other two powders so let's leave that for now Let's try to focus here. I'm not sure it's showing, but there's areas of different metallics in, in the shape. And if you want to have it even more crusty, naturally, you can just sprinkle some black on top to make it even more rustic looking. Let's see if we can lift these up yes we can all cooled down so as it's silicone mold you can just pop the shapes out of the mold this one might be a little tricky yes I got that one as well there there we go and let's take the leaf as well so they don't look much when they come out of the mold and for example here there are some some areas but I can just take my scissors and cut those with plain scissors no files or sanding or whatever needed and also if I would need to have something on like say underneath this one something under oh, sorry this one underneath something I can just put it in half easily and use it let's say opposite of something like this so instead of using heavy duty drills or anything so they are handy so to turn them from 
let's say ugly looking into something more maybe interesting first just so they are plastic so they need something to grab on to if you use acrylic paint that goes as well as acrylic paint works on top sleek surfaces or or on non-absorbing surfaces but if you want to use inks on top or watercolors then a gesso layer is handy as the first one if you're going for the metallic effect I recommend using black, black gesso or black acrylic paint as the first layer because that kind of then creates the shadow in the embellishment so if you miss parts when you're then adding metal effects on top it doesn't matter because then it's looking more like a shadow and depending if you're doing a canvas or if you're doing let's say on glass jar then painting just the other surface or then both if you can see through the object then it might be good to also paint the back side so it doesn't look like hot glue but if you're just using it on top of canvas card or any altered item would paste then just the other side just this one still and like i said earlier the other handy part about painting it with gesso is that then it protects the shape a little bit from the heat because well even though i say that you re <laughs> you need to remember that it's hot glue it will melt and i know it's hot glue and it will melt i've done it a couple of times actually then melted at least part of the embellishment with with a heat tool but when you have the paints on top you kind of notice when the glue underneath starts to move it protects it a little bit and then you can see the movement so then you remember okay i need to st step away for a while and let it cool so the next step would be just painting with black gesso, white gesso, clear gesso, depending what you're going for. If you want really opal looking, pearly looking, then white is naturally a better choice than, than black. But if you want really metal looking, then black is kind of, well, it's the shadow. Then let me move these here as I can't now use the heat tool to dry that layer. So I have some that I already painted beforehand with just so. So you can use metal paints. Let's see if I can. Now they are so black that it won't actually focus there let's see if, if this would help no well i'll just okay now i'll just add the paint there and probably that will help if you use metal paint then dry brushing the paint might be a better choice than using just a heavy hander Because then you are kind of emphasizing the shape. Whenever I'm dry brushing, I'm using my hand as a palette. That's not probably the best choice. <laughs> but it's handy, it's there. So I'll remove the extra paint from my brush to my hand. And like this. Even with just a one coat of metallic looking paint it's already come on 
focus already looking more interesting than just a black blob. If you don't have metallic acrylic paints, then by all means use whoops, dirty, waxes. Even if you use gesso as the first layer of watercolor, metallic watercolors, the look will be different, but just remember that you can't use the heat tool. So I tried embossing and it worked with the gesso layer underneath, but you really need to be careful when, when doing that because the odds are that the embellishment starts melting when you bring the heat. Okay, that's still wet. Let's take another one. Like so. Then for making this project kind of coherent. So there's the same thing coming up and down. I'll use a little bit of the paint in the background. Again, I have the crisscross here. So I'm concentrating my blob of paint around that area. I'm usually kind of bad in that way that when I craft, I don't mind if I'm covering something I've created earlier, which usually ends up being the situation like you can see from here. There is actually acrylic paint underneath, but you can just see it barely through these caps because then I put this one on top and <laughs> I'll lose some of it. But to me, it's about the creative process as well. It's not just the finished piece, but I like kind of adding layers that maybe nobody else will see than me. Or then if I'm doing a process video, people <laughs> watching the video will see. And then let's dry this real quickly. Maybe I need to say again that if you're just tuning in, I'm sorry that I'm not answering your questions because unfortunately I can see them here in, in my screen. They are in my computer, but it's over there. So I'll answer anything. If, if there's any questions, I'll go through them afterwards. I'm, I'm sorry because usually they show up, but I'm not sure if something has changed in the Facebook again. Then one more layer for the background and then we can actually put everything together. And it's, this is my new love, ice. It's an acrylic glaze. So if you have soft body gel medium, especially if it's um, gloss, sorry, lost a word there, gloss version, then mix it with acrylic paint and you get an acrylic glaze. So it's showing a little bit through, not, not that much. So the ice is acrylic glaze. It's just ready-made, lovely colors in, in jars. But as it's acrylic based, I can use it for collage as well. This is kind of the first ways I used it. Just on top of a project, turn it more vintagey looking, add another layer, to change the tone of, of the product, 
but there's so many things you can do it. Again, you don't have to do it if you don't want, want to, and you can make your own glaze product using what you already have. Let's see if there's um, enough underneath for me to adhere it. Seems that it's there, but not in the edge. So let's use an actual thicker adhesive, just in case, as I'm adding everything on top. So this is, again, another style of gel medium. I'm hoping that I'm not babbling something that it's really clear to you all. But I like these mediums, so I like to talk about them. <laughs> so this one is a really thick gel medium. Developed for acrylic paints to resemble oil colors. So they would be really like raised layers. Really like dimensional effects, but it's a perfect adhesive. It's really sturdy. The only thing that's actually now bending is the glue. And on top of a kind of a surface, let's say like the in here. I can actually bend the canvas without everything popping out because even after drying it's moldable in, in that way. So this is usually the stuff gel medium that I use for any type of heavy layering, collage and metal embellishments. The only down part is the drying time which is here in Finland overnight. So as this is kind of the base for everything, I used the really heavy version to adhere it. If, if this would be it, nothing on top, then, sorry about the focus, then the glaze might ac actually do the trick if you put this early enough in place. Then it's just adding our ready embellishments on top. That's a bit too big. Mm -hmm. Let's go with kind of the same composition as it, I've tried it. It works. Hmm. That's an, let's say, interesting sh shape. Let's alter it a little bit. Yeah. Better. Let's go with that. As you can see, I don't plan that much. Whenever something is okay-ish to my eye, then it's adhering time. But like I said, this one dries a long time. So even if in the later run I don't like what I've done, I can still just lift them up only after 24 hours or so it's actually glued that's something i i say in my workshops is if you're doing a big composition so start adhering quite early because then you have to work around it otherwise you can just endlessly change the position of different elements but if you have something glued down you have to work around it and that's how you get things done naturally it's about your style i'm a fast crafter so i actually get annoyed to myself if i ponder about the composition too long let's add for example, the love on top when I add the butterfly so it shows true. Like that. I get annoyed if, if I fiddle around with the composition too long. So I just start sticking things down. Okie dokie.
then a couple of more steps, and then it's actually <laughs> done. I hope you bear with me. There's a lot of different mediums. Yeah, I'm a medium addict in that way that I love to use different mediums for different purposes. Naturally, I, I'm sure you guessed it, you don't have to have a gazillion million. But, well, mixed media is, is about the mediums in a way, so it's fun to find new, new things to love and experiment. What I'm now doing is adding some wax touches. You could do this with acrylic paint, also dry brushing. The look is a little bit different to me. Uh, highlighting is easier with a wax because then I can just use my finger and touch kind of the high points of the embellishments to really get that dimensional look. But you can do it with dry brushing as well. Just dry enough brush. You know, I see a comment that they're hard to believe that they're just glue from a glue gun. Yeah, that's kind of the beauty of, of, of these things. When they come out, like I said, they don't look much. They are, well, uninviting <laughs> in a way, but then they have so many pos possibilities. You can turn them rusty, for example, add rust, rust effect on top, or you can turn them like um, pearly, just pearly paints on top, mica powder. There's almost endless possibilities what you can do to them. Then let's add the butterfly. This is our living room table, so it's small. Okay, let's see which that one's too big. That one's kind of nice. That one is a little bit too tiny. That's kind of similar to that one. Then more. Let's go with that one. I first thought to leave the butterfly off. But when it was the sample project was on this stage, it felt that it needed something. So adding a cut butterfly on top was <laughs> no easy solution. But it could be a vintage photo. It could be another kind of embellishment on top. Or it could be that one metal rusty find which needs to be the center stage on top. Again, it's endless possibilities. Probably, again, something you all know, but I'm staying it still. If you are new to fussy cutting, then scissors tape it and the shape moves. Because otherwise, if you start going around with the scissors, you end up with sore back, neck, hand and it's much faster that way also to give it kind of a butterfly natural what are they called collection thing I'm using a little needle to adhere it to my project and naturally a little bit of the gel underneath also so it will actually stay. And there's the hole in the metal embellishment where I stick the needle to and as there's a lot of the gel underneath it will dry dimensional so it will then hold everything together. I'm not sure if you can pick it up but there's the gel underneath so even though this part is kind of resting on top everything it will then be really sturdy because the gel will dry and dimensional okay come on focus please 
I mean, it will then, then be secured like so. Then just a touch of teal in there. Maybe I actually need to add a little bit of golden wax on top of the needle as well, because now it's looking too silvery. Then maybe I need to the butterfly wings, kind of hiding that white cut part. So it will work on top of paper as well. Okay, let's add some here. Now it's all crooked. Back, thank you. So that's metallic wax. So it creates, well, surprisingly a metal effect. But Vinnevar also has this matte wax. I'm only talking about these waxes because unfortunately these are the only waxes I've ever used. So I know there's different brands. And probably they will also have matte and metallic waxes. So the same idea. And I'm just adding a teeny tiny touch of that patina blue to make it look a bit more grungy. So there's the shiny gold and then touches of the blue kind of giving that weathered coppered coppered copper sorry look and then you could stop there but naturally I didn't because I need some splashes <laughs> so I took an acrylic paint same color which don't want to come out and that's enough Dilute it with water just a little bit so it will splash off my brush and added some on top. And there we go. Again, don't use your heat tool to dry this let it air dry. It's, it's safer that way. Let's try with that one, for example. I'll, if it would now focus. Focus, please. Then all the way here. Let's try with the heat tool so you just see. It started to melt already, but the paint is kind of holding it together. So it's more gooey inside. That's a bit hot, so let's do this. But the paint layer is kind of holding it together. So having that paint layer in there is, is really handy. Actually, you can just then let it cool and then it's okay to be used again. But if it's on top of a project, like you're adding the last final touches, and then you think you used the heat tool and then it melts, so it's it's kind of sad, sad thing. So better to steer away from the heat tool if you're using these handmade embellishments out of hot glue. So there we have it. my little box with self-made embellishments and a lot of different mediums. I hope, hope I give you options what to use instead. Although I have to say that one, one thing that kind of leads me is better to put your box to mediums in, in a way than to pretty embellishments because 
Usually pretty embellishments you can use just once, whereas mediums go a long way. So I usually, if, if you're starting as a mixed media person, I kind of, I'm not sure if it's, <laughs> if it's a good tip or a bad tip, but my tip would be to concentrate on the good mediums, like gesso gel medium, because those are kind of basic and they are hard to replace with something you can find at your home, because you can find metal embellishments like pins, safety pins, um, snap fasteners, you can use those. Whatever you find in your drawers or sewing basket or, or whatever, but it's really hard to replace a gel medium. You can crack craft glue, of course, but it doesn't have the same... Uh, what are there? Okay, now my husband can't even think about the word. But properties, that's the word I'm looking for. Sorry. <laughs> they don't have the same property as, as gel medium, so to me it's rather handy to put box to the mediums and then find alternate ways to make embellishments for the projects. So oh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a nice time. I hope you gained some new information perhaps from this project. Thank you so much for having me and well let's see if if I'm making another live at, at some point. So thank you all so much. I'll go through the comments now. Sorry I wasn't able to answer them directly here, but yeah, thank you so much. Bye for now.